Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about geometric operations, which is a type of category of measurement and data. Now in particular, we're going to be looking a closer look at what's called perimeter. So let's begin by reading a short description of what perimeter questions can typically involve uh, on this page here. So perimeter is the distance around the shape of a closed geometrical figure. It's the sum of the length of all the sides of a polygon. Perimeter questions are similar to height questions and will involve knowledge of properties of geometrical shapes. It's important that we familiarize ourselves with various 2D and 3D shapes. Okay, so perimeter is just the length of how much distance is required to draw out a geometrical figure. So we can see how that may require us to be quite confident in our skills with some kinds of 2D and 3D shapes. When it comes to things like squares and rectangles, the perimeter is fairly easy to figure out. We know uh, that these sides have sides that are the same length for example for the square all of it is the same so as long as you know the length of one side the perimeter is just going to be four times that side or just you can simply add all four sides together as is the traditional method with the rectangle two of its sides are the same so we've got the length and the width so that would be two times the length plus two times the width, or again, we can just add them simply all together as well. So those would be the more simpler kind of perimeter questions. And these questions can sometimes be made more difficult by changing the width in some way or causing some algebra to be part of these questions since the, since the um, concept itself is quite simple. More difficult questions can involve things like circles. So circles have their own name for the perimeter and it's called the circumference. Now, if you want a more in-depth knowledge um, about circumference, it, there is a separate video that you may want to check out as well. But the circumference is a bit special. It uses pi and it's found by taking, whoops, it's bound by taking pi times the diameter or pi times two times the radius. And that's just because the radius is exactly equal to half of the diameter. So two of it is needed for the circumference. The last more complex perimeter, I think, would be for triangles. So in the case of triangles, we're specifically talking about the case of right angle triangles. So triangles where there is a right angle here. That's because these triangles have a very specific formula to figure out this side of the triangle or really any side as long as two of the sides are known. And that's what we call Pythagoras' theorem. If I can spell it out, Pythagoras' theorem. Now, because of this theorem, questions can ask you to calculate a missing, air, missing line of the triangle, and then you have to figure out the perimeter. And this is just a theorem that says that if you know, that if we actually label these three sides as arbitrary names A, B, and C, so this is A, this is B, and this is C, then we can use this equation, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And rearranging this equation can allow us to figure out the length of any side we want. Now, this also has a dedicated video, so check out that video if you want to learn more about Pythagoras' theorem. Now, I believe that video would be the area um, category for compass bearing problems. So now that we know the formulas for most of the simpler kind of shapes, we can also realize that if we ever see a very complicated shape that consists of a bunch of different combined shapes, maybe it's got a triangle at the end, then it's got a rectangle, then it's got like a, a little circle at the end, and it asks you to find the perimeter or maybe a semicircle that probably be more realistic. 
if they ask you to provide the perimeter of this complicated shape, we just know that we can apply the knowledge that we got from the individual shapes and just apply them to this more compound shape. Just find the individual sections and add them up uh, just like you would with for a simpler shape. Okay, so now that we know the information about what we can do to figure out the, the formulas or how we can apply the formulas of various shapes, let's see if we can put them to use on this example question. So for this example question, we're told that a rectangular outer fence is going to be built around a existing fence. It's going to be 10% wider and longer than the diagram below. Now, it asks us to figure out the perimeter of the new fence. Since we're told that this diagram is not to scale, we can't just use a ruler to figure out the correct information. We unfortunately are going to have to use our calculatory abilities. So let's see what we can do here. We're told that to find the perimeter we discussed for a rectangle, we need to know what the width and length of the fencing will be. Now, in this case, we're told that the original fence is going to be four meters in length and 12 meters, sorry, 12 meters in length and four meters in width. And that's just the original fence. Now, we're told that another fence is going to be built around that and it's going to be slightly wider and longer. Now, I don't really know why they need a second fence when they've already got one fence, but for the sake of the question, that's going to be what this setup is going to look like. So let's figure out the length first. The length of the rectangle we're told to be 12 meters. Now we need to figure out the length of the new rectangle, the one going around to figure out the answer. Now, in this case, we're told that the length is going to be 10% longer than the original length. So that means when we have the length of 12 meters, we're adding on 10% more of the original length. So this diagram kind of matters because it helps us understand conceptually what's going on. In the case that we're making it 10% longer, we've got the original length, 12 meters. So 100% of the original length is maintained, but we also add in another bit and that's equal to 10%. So the new length is essentially the addition of these two percentages. So it's going to be 110% of the new length, not just 10%. So that means if we multiply this percentage by the original length, we're going to get the length of the new fence. So multiplying by percentage is always a bit difficult. So it's much easier if we convert it into a decimal. Now conversion of percentages to decimals is always done by simply dividing by 100%, giving us 1.1 as the answer. So these two numbers are essentially the same number, they're just written in a different manner. That means we can go ahead with the multiplication, 1.1 times, whoops, 12 meters, not 1.2, and that gives us the new length as 13.2 meters. Okay, so this kind of step is nice to do when you're working out, especially if it says it's going to be less wider. So the original length is actually shortened rather than increased. And that helps you multiply by the correct percentage and not the not by 10% or whatever the question gives you. So let's apply that technique to the width as well. We're given the original width as four meters. And again, we see that it's going to be wider by the exact same same percentage. So again, we've got the original four meters, so all of it, 100%, and 10% more is going to be tacked on. So in total, we've got a total of 110% increase in width. And that is, of course, 1.1 as well, if we convert it into a decimal. So four times 1.1 will give us the new width. And that's going to equal to 4.4 meters. Okay, so now that we know the length and width of the new fence, we've got all the pieces of the puzzle to figure out the perimeter. We know that for the perimeter for a rectangle, we can multiply the length and the width by two and add those two together to figure out the perimeter. Now we thankfully know all these values. 
the new length is equal to 13.2 and the new width is equal to 4.4. Adding all those calculations together gives us the grand total of the perimeter as 35.2 meters. So the correct response will be option B. Okay, so here in this question, we saw how as long as we apply the knowledge that the perimeter is the addition of all the points that make up the diagram, we figured out the correct answer. It was also important to note the concept of how the length change or the width change would have affected our answer as well. So hopefully this ends up helping you guys out when you tackle perimeter related questions in the future. Thanks everyone so much for listening.